Historically, there have been nearly 400 treaties between the U.S. and the American Indian nations. How has diplomacy progressed between these groups? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and I'm joined by Suzanne Harjo of the National Museum of the American Indian. Suzanne, welcome to the program. Thank you. You know, I'm not sure most people in this country know that there have been so many treaties between the U.S. government, per se, and Native American tribes. Yes, Native American nations and the U.S. government have made over 400 treaties, and those are documented uh, in a two-volume book by Vine Deloria that's published by the University of Oklahoma Press, and he was my initial co-curator of this exhibit when we began it in 2003. Wow. <laughs> And you mentioned this exhibit, I think for the benefit of our viewers at home uh, that come to Washington, D.C. or plan to come to Washington, D.C. over the next four years, there's going to be this exhibit that highlights and focuses uh, the unique and sometimes complex, arguably controversial relationship between the United States uh, and, and, and tribes. And that will be from September 21st, 2014, meaning the exhibit, until September 1st, 2018. That's right. Suzanne, why the long uh, period of time for this uh, this exhibit to be for four years? It will take a long time for people to go through it and to absorb it and it's the sort of exhibit that you might want to take in just a part of it and come back and see it. I see. So we're looking for repeat um, uh, visitors and for more and more tours. Uh, we hope that there will be a lot of young people looking at this exhibit. You know, pardon the, the naive question, but uh, do treaties still exist today in 2014 between the government of the United States as well as with Native American tribes? Yes. Nations? Yes. Our, uh, our treaties, and, and it's right to say tribes or nations, but um, uh, the, the nationhood is so important because it is that very nationhood that, that makes treaties. You can't make a treaty with a non-sovereign, non-nation. And, uh, and this country was founded on those treaties, on the land exchanges. A lot of people think that we were conquered people, and we're not. Um, mostly the United States couldn't conquer us. But we entered into these treaties of peace and friendship not to uh, end war, but to make peace. So, in other words, a better understanding uh, from a cultural standpoint, but also from an historical standpoint. And I think that's what the exhibit is supposed to do, is to put things in context. Yes. And talk to us for a few moments about these, the, the treaties in terms of the, the, the scope. Does it cover everything from uh, culture? Uh, is it land? Is it language? Is it all of the above and then some? All of the above and then some. It's about all of that and the basic premise of treaties, which is peace Understanding. forever, peace forever, peace and friendship forever. That's the basic um, thrust of the treaties. And all else is um, we're going to make these exchanges. Understood. Because, you know, no non-native people were, were dragging any land when they came here. Understood. So when our nations made those treaties, we were carving out lands for for the newcomers, for the foreigners to use. And they were so hungry for land that they were sometimes horribly aggressive and manipulative and behaved very badly. They weren't guests. They, they acted like marauders in some cases. So we needed to have the protection of the colonies and then the states, and then the United States against these citizens. Suzanne Harjo, thank you very much for joining us. Great exhibit. Look forward to seeing it. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.